Good afternoon, this is Fiat Panda Man, and this is a tutorial that nobody asked for, nobody wanted, and probably nobody will need. Um, this is a Fiat Panda Selector 1.1 with injection. Um, the engine is a standard fire engine, and you'll see it in Machinkachenko, uh, Sincento, probably some of the Puntos as well, the early 8 valves. Now, on this Panda, uh, ignore the temperature gauge, we're aware we have a problem but you can see then that the injector light went out initially then came back on. So this is one of the few pandas fitted with single point injection and an ECU so we need to code read this to find out what the problem is. So we're going to have two bits of equipment for this one The uh, first piece of equipment is a Fiat OBD, OBD2, so it's a Fiat 3 pin, there we go, to OBD2 connector. Second piece of equipment is a OBD2 connector to... Limited for room to USB. So these pieces of kit are available on Amazon. The first connector is about four quid, the second connector was about 12 pounds. This is just a uh, standard, uh, I think it's a VAG unit, um, but it does work on the early Fiat's, um, Alphas, etc. So this setup will work for your Fiat Pandas, your Fiat Cinchentos, your Fiat Cinchenkos, um and anything that's really kind of early free pin, so I suspect probably Fiat Coupes as well. Okay, so the first step we're going to have to go through is actually locating our three pin ECU diagnostics connector. I know where this is on this Panda. On the Cinchenko and Cinchento, it's on the right hand side of a bulkhead. Uh, right hand side as you're looking at a vehicle you'll find something that looks very similar to this. Now Fiat have nicely put this inside the Fiat Panda selector. So what we need to do is use a giant axle stand. Is first connect our three pin diagnostic connector to the diagnostic port. There we go. Now you'll notice this 3-pin connector. Let's go down a bit. We've got two crocodile clips. So red needs to go to a positive battery terminal. Black needs to go to a negative battery terminal. Um, bit of a git because there's no power inside the vehicle to do that with so we're going to have to extend some power from a battery um, to this cable which I'm going to cut through and do now okay so skipping back a bit if you own a Cinchento or a Cinchenko or early Punto perhaps generally your ECU diagnostics port will be somewhere down on the right here um, what we've had to do is actually take some power directly from the battery. And run that inside the vehicle. So if we see the crocodile clips now, we've connected it to the negative and the positive. We know the connector's live now. As you can see, there's a blue light on it. So what we're going to do next is we're going to fire up the laptop. Okay, so we're going to plug this in to the laptop. Okay, a shortcut there as it was nearly impossible to do that one-handedly. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're opening up the Fiat Scan application, the multi-scan application. So 
So we've connected it to our connection, our USB. Then we can see if we go into the settings and the interface tab, we've got K-Line Viacom selected, and I know this is a COM2. So we're going to click OK. We're going to select our Fiat, and then we're going to select our Panda Selector Eco, and then our ECU. So we're going to click Connect. I'm going to turn the ignition on. I want to say, you have to excuse my sniffing, I've got a bit of a cold here. But Fiat Scan has now connected to the ECU. So if we go up to the Errors tab, we can see that on this particular Fiat Panda we have an air temperature sensor issue. Now what we can do is we can actually go down and clear the errors. And it's clearing the stored fault codes. If we reconnect now, I'm going to have to flip the ignition off and on again. We go back to errors, we can see that the air temperature sensor is still there. So we know we have a persistent issue with this particular fault, so we have to rectify that, then come back in and then clear this. What we can also do with Fiat Scan, is if I go onto parameters, we can actually monitor engine outputs and inputs. So if I want to measure engine temperature, air temperature, intake pressure, and battery voltage, we can see they're all ticked now, so if I were to start this. We can see the values have become live, 14.13 volts, a engine temperature of 35 degrees, and a inlet temperature of 35. Now, one of the oddities is, we're actually getting an air temperature, but we're getting an air temperature code as well, so something's not quite right with that. What we can also do is we can go into graphs and if I click start we're going to knock off battery voltage on here actually. and the intake pressure. We can see that we're monitoring that now, so the engine temperature is 42 degrees, the air temperature is 38 degrees, and yeah, we can see that it will be plotted on a graph now. So I know, although are having issues with the temperature gauge but the engine temperature is correct so we can see 42 on the gauge we can see what it's reading straight away over 90 now these Fiat Panda selectors and various other early Fiat's there's two temperature gauges one for the ECU and one for the gauge so we know that the gauge is at fault and that we don't actually have an overheating issue finally the last thing I need to show you is the actuators. So what we can do here is we can file the coil 1 and coil 2, the idle actuator, the evacuation control valve, fuel pump relay and RPM counter, as well as the injectors, we can pulse those. So if we're having issues, we can go into diagnostics and make sure that each one of those items is working correctly. Okay, so uh, that's it really, that concludes this kind of how-to guide. Um, I doubt anybody ever in a history of everything will ever want to fault code a Fiat Panda. But if you do want to fault code a Fiat Panda that has injection and an ECU, this is how you do that. So uh, thanks for watching and until um, next time.